Foundation that we were uh, talking about. Now, since there's not a lot of people on here yet, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of talk about some stuff while I'm waiting for people to show up. Let me go ahead and uh, post this on Facebook really quick so that people can find it. Let's see, share, copy link, and Facebook business. Post. Hey, Master Far, thanks for joining us, man. All right, I just posted it on my Facebook page, so hopefully people will show up. That'd be cool. All right, so um, last video, I was talking about the sarcophagus. People had some questions about it. Hey, hey Dorky Hippie 81 thanks for joining us. So I wanted to kind of show you guys some stuff on this before we jump into the Power and Honor Foundation. So when I was talking about this face, like I mentioned before, I made two of them. This was the second one. And this one I used Titus's face on it. Because originally I actually used this model right here for the face and for the, the headdress here. And let me show you what it looks like. There it is. So you can see the original one is much smaller. And I made a, a bigger version of it. And then the face, where is that face? There it is. So here was the face that was supposed to be used originally. And I just didn't like that face. And I liked using Titus's face better. It just made more sense to use, to use Titus's face. Um, since he's one of the ancients. So I thought it kind of cool to do it that way. So that's why it's Titus's face. So there you go. Whoop. Oh, I almost dropped my iPad. All right, let me put that model away. I just want to show you guys where that came from. And I thought it'd be kind of a cool way to do it. So let me set that aside. Boop. Let me check and see if you guys have any comments. Something went wrong. Oh, I thought I'd make you watch an advertisement first. So I just came back in. Oh, somebody else mentioned too, I could have used some kind of technique to blow it up from there. One of the comments. Um, I really don't like doing casting and stuff like that by making molds. So to do the enlarging stuff, it would have been uh, um, it would have been a lot of effort to to blow this up to make it this size, and you'd lose some of the detailing in the face and stuff. So I, um, it, it is a cool technique to to blow things up using that that hydro. I forget what it's called now, but um, I just don't want to go through all that effort. All right, what is anti Eternia Skeletor? Now that is kind of funny. I have seen customs of that. Basically, anti Eternia Skeletor is uh, um, Caucasian, and he looks like a Zodak almost. Now, quick little uh, thing again for those that weren't here last night is if you want to get Hebrew armor and sword, the links in the description to the guy who made mine. Um, now I I paint mine green myself, but I ordered the the, the armor and sword from um, a friend of mine who runs an eBay store. And uh, I have a link to one of his other auctions. It's actually the 2000X He-Man head that I have a link to. Um, right now, his store's closed until the 24th of December, but you can still contact him and let him know you want Hebro armor and, and a sword. All right, looks like we got a lot of people on here now. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's see. Uh, vet name, uh, 1245. Thanks for joining us. Anthony, thanks for being here. Steve, thanks for being here. Now, when we left off yesterday... We were in vehicles, if I remember right. Let me move the sarcophagus out of here. So let's go ahead and get back to our vehicles. There we go. That's where we left off at. And uh, you can see here some of the cool drawings they had and the original battle ram and uh, the original wind raider. I like somebody mentioned yesterday how small it looks. It's like some little go-kart looking thing. 
and of course we have the bigger one that we ended up with that light is just right in the way there we go that's better so there we go I gave mine one of your blue swords oh cool all right and there we have the road ripper road ripper then he has some vehicle that we never have seen before but that would be really cool some kind of giant ladder looking vehicle I guess there's some better lighting in here just not aiming that light on it makes it look so dark but yet if I get it too close then it has a giant shine on it let's see how that works all right so and you can see we got fisto in there and stratos and we have a uh, battle armor he-man and naked he-man and man-at-arms which is always kind of funny they always showed more than one he-man and in the posters they'd have he-man and adam both in there sometimes so i almost wonder if sometimes the people making the artwork didn't realize that they were two different guys it almost reminds me of micronauts you have all these time travelers everywhere and they kind of just fill all the seats and I almost wonder if the He-Man figure they thought was more generic when they did the artwork. And so you had like multiple He-Men in different uh, places. So not sure there. All right. Here we have some kind of spacecraft looking thing. It's like a bullet or something. Kind of cool looking. Oops. Sorry about that. Right over there. And then we have um, the Cannon Hopper. Basically, this was the um, Dragon Walker, and like I mentioned in my other video, if you had it just right, you could have the legs flip over a table with a gap in it, and that was always kind of fun to let's set it up just right. Uh, my kids actually had one of these for a little while, and it's, it was kind of fun. So look at this crazy vehicle up here. Some kind of skull spider looking thing. That's, that looks kind of crazy. Looks like almost like something from New Adventures more than uh, the classic He-Man stuff. Look at that. Looks like something out of uh, Aliens or something. That, that giant uh, thing that Ripley used. There's a giant snake mountain walking. I just saw someone just the other day take and make a, an, a, snake, a snake mountain armor for Skeletor for a custom. And that looks pretty similar to that. That's cool, cool. And there we're getting something closer to the spy door. That's pretty cool too. Man, they had some crazy stuff. Look at the crazy creature He-Man goes inside of to make him bigger. And then a little bird to ride on. It's like he's riding a, um, an ostrich or something. And then we got some kind of trap thing here. A prison on wheels. Now, I remember as a kid seeing toys like this for sale when you go to the carnival or a fair. Where it'd just be a car and a wheel or a track that you put in a circle. So I imagine where they got the idea for that was probably they had those toys. They've seen them. It's like, hey, we could stick Beast Man in there. This is kind of cool. It's like some kind of cool G.I. Joe tank. Actually, this little turbine looks like something from a koi or from the Micronauts. That's cool. And then we have Skeletor. And it looks like he has no legs, but I'm guessing these must not be holes. They must be um, just green colored, I'm guessing. But then eventually we got this. That was pretty cool. dun da da It's funny too. I remember uh, my boys pushing this around the living room floor and just thinking rat a tat tat as we'd go around and knock over figures and stuff. The big old giant blade. Now, this is cool. Look at that. Fighter plane for Skeletor. That is really cool looking. Now, of course, we've seen this the dragonfly, um, known as the Fright Fighter. Okay, this was kind of a fun vehicle. Like I mentioned before in my other video, it's the only one that really Ram Man could fit into. So it worked out good that Ram Man could finally have a vehicle to go into up and down. It's like you guys were leaving all kinds of comments. Let me see your guys' comments you're leaving. The Origins are releasing him in spring. Who is that? Hey, Rick, who are they re going to re release in spring? I didn't catch what the reference was. Hey, what is that Snake Mountain called? Um, let's see if they gave us a name for it. It was more like armor that Skeletor was wearing. 
Yeah, they don't have a name on it. It just says Monster Walker. That's all it says. Monster Walker. Copyright Mattel. Monster Walker. Yeah, I don't know if they actually always gave this. This one's also a motorized walker, too, for below. So that's kind of cool. It actually be motorized. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. For me, Strider was the most boring vehicle as a child. Yes, Strider was pretty boring. The, the Fright Fighter was cool. After I have one that I'm in the middle of re-doing, re, uh, I went and bought an old, old Fright Fighter, actually two of them, and got some new stickers for it and got some new parts for my friend that's making the, the um, Hebrew armor and swords. He has some weapons that are soft and rubber so they don't break. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, look at that. It looks like this probably comes forward and then smashes, almost like that Bashasaurus that we had. Giant claw hand. Ugh. It's funny. It's like the same vehicle, just redesigned. That's pretty cool. Oh, there it is. Shark attack. Okay, land shark. Shark attack would have been so much cooler. Or shark tank. That would have been cool too. Any one of those. But land shark. Come on. Land shark. That thing with beast man is going to be in the CGI toy line. The, the car that goes in a circle. Sorry, the leg between... This right here is going to be in the CGI toys. Crazy. Trap jaw on the land shark. Which makes sense because he has a jaw and it has a jaw. I mean, that probably makes the most sense. I always thought it should be Merman. But that makes more sense because he's got a big giant <laughs> chopping jaw. And he's got a chopping jaw. That actually makes sense. It should be Trap Jaw's vehicle. All this time. Then it has these hands that hold the spinning disc on there. That's kind of cool. I guess Ted Mayer made this one. And it looks like it turned into the Road Ripper. It has a giant wheel back here and the same type of things we saw on the Road Ripper. So other cool vehicles in the line. Oh, this looks kind of cool. Look at that. Wow. Oh, the tank. Dun, dun, dun. This looks like some kind of weird Batmobile or something almost. Wow, cool. So these are like, um, are actually vehicles you mix together to make new vehicles. You can see there's the same parts here. So you can see here's that piece here, here's those pieces on there. And so these three separate vehicles are combined into this one giant massive one here. So that's what this is. This is like, a, um, oh, how can I forget his name? The, the guy that you take apart, and he's red, and you rebuild him. Post his name for me in the comments. It's been a long day today. Now, they actually made something like this. It shoots these discs like that. That's crazy. Poor, poor Merman. And look, they made Merman blue. Just like uh, in the comic. Instead of making him green. It's funny, I had a friend, he swore up and down that Merman was actually blue. That his toy as a kid was blue. And I'm like, no, they didn't make a blue Merman. He was actually green. I mean, kind of a greenish blue, but not blue blue. Recording sound playset. Record sound the voice. Weird. So then we have, now we've seen this later on built into a different vehicle that has this armor that attaches on and it's a much smaller one, but that's pretty cool too. Actually, I thought we saw this earlier in a different part of the book. Oh. 
Look at all these cool different vehicles they have. Now it's funny is look at these pieces here on his hands and we saw those with the stilts. So it's the same stilt pieces. There we go. There it is right there. The one that we actually got. And then of course we got the mega laser similar to that, but this would have been cool. I would have loved the helicopter thing. I remember I had one of these for my GI Joes when I was a kid. That had been fun to have for He-Man as well. I always like the stilt stalker. That's always a fun, fun toy. Some kind of parachute. This looks like a kite parachute. I wonder if it's actually just a kite. Let's see if it says here. Helicopter. The claw climbing. The war wing, they called it. So maybe it just kind of flung forward a little bit and coasted down forward. Looks like it has some kind of skull face with fish on it or something, but I doubt that's what that is. So here we have the tower tools. We have the climbing stuff, the cliff climber. Those were those those are cool. They show them all these girders and stuff, but they didn't have any toys that had girders. And they didn't really hook very well on the Castle Grey Skull the way the, the pieces were. But you could kind of make them work. Oh look at this colossal war war bot. I'm guessing it's supposed to be a giant, but I could be wrong. A piece of articulated armor that would house and protect a standing action figure within its hollow interior. Skeletor's own personal suit of armor. Oh yeah, it is big. Look at that. There's Skeletor in there up the top. That's cool. Now, they actually made something like this for um, uh, New Adventures. Um, I forget the name of the vehicle now. Let me go grab my box so I can look at the vehicle. Hold on a second. Uh. It was called Tarot Claw, I think, or something. Ugh. Yeah, here it is. So this thing right here, the Tarot Claw, you could actually stand it upright like this, and then you could put Skeletor on the inside and the legs would then walk, and it looked very similar to the way that robot is right there. And I remember my, my kids had those too, and they would actually, they had two of them. And uh, each had one, and, and um, it would actually like a giant suit of armor walking kind of when Skeletor would get, go into it like that. Now we used to use the the original Skeletor, original figures with it, not the New Adventures figures. Giant footprint trap. Well, that's kind of kind of creepy. It's like bear traps that close on He-Man's feet. Net trap. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so now we're starting to get more into the play sets. And here we have Castle Grayskull. Let me go and look at your guys' comments. Sorry, I haven't been reading them. Let me put that weight back there again. Let's see. I see an early picture comic. Clamp Champ was white. Wow, I haven't seen that. Uh, I would put the Mega Laser on Rio Blast and Stilt Stalkers on Extendor and give the Jet Sled to Stratos if I could. Nice, Master Far. Early Fright Zone concept. Oh yeah, the Early Fright Zone concept is really cool. Oh cool, I just watched part one earlier today. I didn't know you'd be doing part two so soon. Well, re re reformatted uh, 2086, I'm glad you're here. Todd, you think you'll have Zor and Screech with the Origins? Yeah, I think they will have Zoran Screech the Origins. I don't know why they wouldn't. Now, who knows what size they're going to be. Um, I don't know if they're going to give us the full size that we had before, which because those were actually big gym birds. I just happen to have one sitting right here on my desk. <sighs> yeah, I remember as a kid, uh, I had both Skeletor's bird and uh, He-Man's bird. And... All right, Flea Man... And I remember I would have them holding the bird. Holding the bird. Giving them the bird. Just like this. Like they were, uh, you know, had their battle uh, things ready to go. And how cool that would be. As they would command their birds to fight in the air. So yeah, I remember, of course, this is not the original figure. This is, of course, Origins, but... 
Yeah. And I remember flapping these things around all through the house. It was so much fun. <laughs> Back in the day. Now, I always wanted to stick them on his arm. Because Big Jim, when they had this bird, it would fit on his arm. Now, look at that. It does fit on Origins. That's cool. But it would never fit, actually. That, that's actually pretty cool. It would never actually fit very good on um, the original vintage figures. So, that's actually cool. It actually fits on his arm. Oh, man. I, I like that too much. All right. Learn something new every day. I never had the sorceress, but I would use Zor instead. Yep, I actually never pretended like that the bird was a sorceress when I would play as a kid. Like I said, I used two Tila's, and the bird was not one of wasn't Tila or Evil Lynn or anything else like that. It was just the bird by itself. All right, let's check out the castle. The castle was a lot different than what we got originally. And then we'll go back through this. So um, you can see the original castle had. Um, the mouth kind of extruded out like a little tunnel almost. This part was larger on top. We had a different gun. Um, we had a play mat that went around it. Well, we didn't actually have that, but we, that's what they had originally built for it. And the door was actually pretty small. In fact, the door, when it closed, would only go up about right here. There was a giant gap between the mouth and the top of the door. Now, that was never released. This was just the one they used for the concept. And it had a shelf back here on this side, which we saw them remake that shelf when it came to uh, classics. Now this looks like it has more room up here for figures to actually stand along there. And then on the inside, we had quite a lot of stuff that was different. Um, one, they had some kind of torture rack. They had uh, like a punching bag type thing to practice on. They had the jet pack that we got later on. We had the ladder with the one single pole down the center, a different type of throne that we actually got with uh, classics. And uh, there's that gun right there. And so it was just a little bit different than what we actually got. But still, pretty cool. And the elevator was round instead of the shape we ended up with. Yeah, you know, that play mat was pretty cool looking. All right, let me take a look at your questions. The barbell I actually got from my granddaughter a long time ago so she could work out with me, if you're wondering about that. Put the purple dumbbells in He-Man's hand. I don't know, uh, Pierce said it's, it's, it would just crush him. It, I, it's only three pounds, but yeah, there's no way he could hold it. It would just demolish him. Hoo! 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 All right, there you go. The torture bed is awesome. Now, Originally, as we know, Castle Grayskull was meant for both the evil and the good guys, depending on which way the flag was turned. And so basically, whoever would capture the castle would flip the flag either on the good swords or the evil swords, and they would be the ones in control of the mighty Castle Grayskull. And then, of course, the other team would then fight to get it. So it was almost like a, a capture the flag or king of the hill or something else like that. So basically... They would capture the for fortress and it would be theirs for that time period. So that's kind of what the concept was. And so having a torture rack, no big deal. You can see right there where the door doesn't close all the way. By the way, let's see, it's just, you know, I should turn this light off. It's causing part of my shine. There we go. So you can see the door was just not closed all the way. So if it was only for the good guys, I think the torture rack is a little too much for kids saying the good guys have the torture rack. That just that just seems that just seems bad for the good guys. Anyway, so here is the original Snake Mountain designs. And you can see it was some kind of cool jungle with a bridge and waterfall over here and a big old rock and a big old rock and the entrance and the gate. And you can see that they changed this side pretty much stayed the same with the flag and everything else. You know, the idea of this side stayed the same. And that big hole we see, that's what was for a rock. And so that's what that was for at the time. And I'm guessing there's probably like a button you push to knock the rock out. That's why we have a hole on the side, but who knows. But this side changed drastically. So this side of it doesn't have the hole going through it or guns on the side. And I remember it had a little perch right here for the um, people to get trapped. And they actually used this concept for the other side 
So you can kind of see here is the other side. It's supposed to be a, a whole different playset, and they kind of combined this playset and this playset and made the Snake Mountain that we got. So there you go. So kind of cool. Um, I would have really loved to have the jungle playset. I actually think that's neater than Snake Mountain, but oh well, we, we got what we got. I never had Snake Mountain as a kid. I remember going to my friend's house and they had one and, and I couldn't believe how cool it was. And, and his little brother was grabbing the microphone and talking into it. It's like, oh, it's so cool. So here we have some other stuff. This is phenomenally awesome. Let me talk about it in a second. Let me look at your guys' comments first. The set on the right looks like a story in the Greek Titan Prometheus who gets punished for giving man fire and his liver was eaten every day yeah it kind of does like that um, i'm warming up to orko but i used to hate him yeah i kind of am too um i prefer the snake mountain of what we know all right maybe for power con next year they can do a snake mountain um they'll do the jungle set that'd be cool the torture racks for, for orko stick him in there and forget about him Back in 82, I thought the castle belonged to Skeletor. This is how I played it. And if you look at the card box art, or the box art, it looks like it belongs to Skeletor. So that's not that unbelievable. Torture is a neutral man's... <laughs> that's funny. Persuasion device. Capture the flag is, is still the way I do it. Nice. Why is your Zodak your He-Man? Why was... Oh... Um, I didn't have He-Man as a, as a, for a long time, so I used to use Zodak as He-Man. So I used to pretend like Zodak was He-Man of the Mask on for a long time. All right, so um, this, this is the coolest thing. This was made to go under your um, Castle Grayskull. And this ledge right here is where you'd sit your Castle Grayskull on. And it was a third floor to Castle Grayskull. So you put your Castle Grayskull on top of there. Then you have another floor beneath there. And it had like all these cool things. So you could have a basement to your Castle Grayskull. And I think that is just the coolest thing ever. To have a basement to your Castle Grayskull. Now of course this is where I got the idea for the dungeon. Now, I imagine this dungeon was a lot smaller than the one that I produced. And I want to show you guys something. So... Uh, let me just pull this one out of here. So here's one that's, oops, still uh, in the middle of being worked, and I haven't pulled off all the chunks yet. But before I sand it or fin fin finishes on, you can kind of see the roughness on here of when it gets printed. Now, obviously, these little bits and parts come right off. It's just support pieces. But I want to show you one I just finished, probably about maybe literally five minutes before this video started um, for, for a guy on he-man.org and here is the dungeon piece and you can just see how smooth that is I put uh, two coats of resin on it and uh, after I sanded it and then after two coats of resin I uh, put on like three coats of uh, clear paint that is uh, UV protected so it won't uh, cause it to turn yellow and it just looks so much cleaner and finished. Oh, it looks so cool. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys the difference between um, a raw one and a finished one. So you can kind of get the idea of... Uh... Now, sometimes the resins come in different colors. It didn't change this color just from putting the, the coating on it. But the coating does mute the color a little bit, which actually makes it match Castle Grayskull better. But... Um... I don't know why their greens are not consistent. Lately, they've been more consistent to this green than this green. But anyway, so if you guys do want to get a dungeon, um, contact me on Facebook and I can give you guys the prices for them. Um, they are kind of slow to make. People have been waiting for them. I just had to fix my printer today and it's printing a floor finally again. Hopefully it works. I just had to switch the nozzle and do a clean on it. And... Uh, that will be the second to last piece for the one that is going out soon. So, pretty cool. 
All right, I'll stop talking about the dungeon, you guys. You've heard lots of videos on it already. Can you sell it on Shapeways? You're sitting on a gold mine. I tried to load it to Shapeways, and it's too big. They won't actually print it at that size. So, out of luck on the Shapeways. And besides that, it'd be hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It'd probably be probably eight, nine hundred bucks to print on Shapeways. Hey, thanks, Pierce. I wish you a Merry Christmas, too. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. So, this is kind of an interesting playset. I don't know how I feel about it. At first glance, it's like, oh, look at all the cool features. But what I don't like about it, and I don't like my playsets that do this, is this dragon here is part of the playset, and it's actually molded into it. And it's, it's kind of like the slime pit where we have that monster hanging on in the back of the slime pit with his hand and his head. And it's not separable. You can't take it apart from it. And I don't like that it's stuck on to the, the actual playset. That's always kind of bothered me. I, it would be cool if the dragon wrapped around it and you could pull it off so you could have the dragon and the dragon in the playset. But when it's built into the playset, it kind of takes away that playability. And I kind of wish they would not have, have done that. But they got some really cool features on here. Um, like... Uh, um, like somehow the figures can get caught in here in the dragon and this hand shoots up and all kinds of other cool features. So it was kind of like a really cool haunted house almost. There's all these cool features. If they had everything except for the dragon and then sold the dragon separately, I would have loved it. It would have been awesome. This cool castle, crazy haunted house kind of thing. But since the dragon's stuck on it, and here's the dragon's tail sticking out right here, it, it just kind of, it's like a Hot Wheels set where they have the, the monster part of the Hot Wheels set and you can't remove them. Because the dragon's not going to be there forever. I want to be able to have the castle by itself or have the dragon by itself sometimes. So that was something that that um, kind of deterred me from this place that if they actually did make it. But it is cool. Um, it just kind of stinks that the dragon's lair, we're going to call it, um, the has the dragon attached and built into the structure. So I'm guessing maybe even on the back side, the dragon might even be hollow, just like we saw with the slime pit, where the back of the slime pit is hollow where his hand is and stuff. So you kind of lose the illusion. Okay, these are the coolest things. Oh, I wish they would have made these. Now, I don't know which one I'd want more um, because they would have only made one. They wouldn't have made two. But basically, it's the same set, just designed by two different guys. And it can go either on your doorknob or on your wall. And basically, once it's on your wall, you can have these cool things, you know, um, you know, a wire going down so they can slide down. And, and I remember being a kid, we'd hook up Hot Wheel tracks from bunk beds and down the stairs and everything. This is the same kind of deal. You could have this up. You could put this on your bunk bed even if you wanted to and, you know, have it running down the side of it. It just would have been a really cool thing. Now... This one, I'm guessing, is probably the one they'd probably end up producing because it's not quite as detailed. And it does look kind of cool, but there's some things about this one I like. I mean, it still has, you know, it still has the grappling hook kind of thing going down and the spool to wind it up. But, I don't know, this one just looks more cool castle medieval-y. Alright, let's turn the page. Turn the page! Oh, what is this? This looks like the beginning of uh, of our uh, Fright Zone. You can see we got the jail right here. We got some crazy monster coming out of a hole and this plant, man-eating plant. And this is probably some kind of pit to go into. Which always, and there's a tree that's alive too. So yeah, this is probably the first uh, um, playset idea they had as they're building the, the um, Fright Zone. Now, it's funny, as I remember as a kid, the Star Wars one, the Dagobah, and they had the, the quicksand or the slime pit, not slime pit, but the, and for Luke Skywalker to fall through. And it was funny because that reminded me of this when I first uh, saw the, the two to toys. And sometimes my memory even mixes up the two toys in my head about what you, each one did a little differently. All right, let's take a look at this one. This one's really cool, too. It's got all kinds of cool, fun stuff. Again, it's got plastic creatures stuck inside of it, which um, that's just always bothered me when a creature is actually part of the place setting is non-removable. Non um, but that's just my own little pet peeve. But it does like fun. It's like a, some kind of water feature to it. 
You can see the water flowing here and a little thing to pour the water on in a pump. So almost like the Princess of Power toys they had at the water running pumps. And so I imagine you pump this, probably turns the wheel. The wheel probably turns something else over here. Who knows? It's like a trap for He-Man. Look at that. Ah, as the water goes up. Like the, the game Aqua Aqua from uh, Xbox 2. Okay, this is kind of fun. A roller coaster ride. Kind of almost more of a Hot Wheels thing. You got a track, you got a little car, and along the way you got traps and guys and things and spikes and boulders, and eventually you get to the sword. And again, they got, you know, another creature attached. Not quite so bad, you know, like, like the snake on Snake Mountain. Doesn't bother me that much, but it's still nice when the, if it's a big creature that it's removable. What are the written descriptions, like the creator's name and a few insights, um, where, where it was built? Hmm. So I'm not sure which playset you're referring to. If it's this one here, I'll bring this closer to you guys so you can take a look at it. And you can pause it later if you want to. Ooh, ah. And then the other one I think you might be talking about is the door hanger ones. And again, two different uh, guys made it. I will adjust that on there so you guys can see that. And again, feel free to pause and look at it. So it's like maybe Ted Mayer. And then here's the other one. Roger Sweet. There you go. Again, Ted Mayer, Roger Sweet, battling it out for which play set is better. And you can, you can just see the style difference. Ooh. All right. So here we have the beginning of the Eternia play set. And you can see the first design there, kind of cool. Then we get this design closer to what we actually got. Now, I never actually owned one as a kid. Uh, I still don't own one, so I never owned one ever in my life, but it does look pretty cool. And they got, you know, of course, things landing on top, and, you know, they got the monorail. And we have some uh, cool battling games where you shoot balls through the holes. And it's funny, I actually got a gimmick some time before for my kids. It's similar to that, where you shoot the marbles through the holes. Kind of fun. Take the cannons and shoot each other. Oh, look at this. You mold your own creatures and figures. That's kind of cool. The He-Man Molding Press, illustrated by Ted Mayer. And we have this one here for making weapons. Almost as like the, the Creepy Crawler set. This was made by Ed Watts. I think I might have missed a page. There we go. Optimagic. Oh, it's a periscope. Telescope, viewer magnifier, and periscope. So basically it's some kind of optical thing you can play with as a kid with all kinds of different stuff. And we have a C and say. Skeletor says, <laughs> All right. Now onto the powers of Grayskull. The powers of Grayskull. Wow. You hated the Eternia play set and never wanted it. I remember uh, there was this TV show on TV called The Charmings. And they, the kids got the Eternia playset. Um, now, by the time that set came out, I was older and uh, didn't collect figures anymore. So I didn't have any of the 86, 87, and very few of the 85 figures. So most of mine was the 83, 84 series. So, so I've often wondered what the G stood for. It's it for Powers of Grayskull. It must be. The main star of this new line was going to be a man named Grayskull. The personification character hinted at many times in various canons. 
So that must be it. Look at that. The powers of Grayskull. So hence the G. And you can see the pre Eternia, how cool it is. And look, they have two Megators back there stomping and kicking. The Megator twins. And then we have uh, <laughs> the Snake Man just beating the snot out of this poor guy. Is that a guy or a girl? I cannot tell from that angle. And then you have, uh, of course, th this guy just slicing the snake up into chunks. We got Titus back here in the corner without his armor on. All kinds of melee going on. This giant snake creature who's eating a person. You can see there's a person inside there. Wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. The imagination of these guys and the crazy battles. All right. E-Man, high energy military attack nucleus. Uh, yeah. All right. So this was one of the ideas for new adventures. As you can see, they had lots of different ideas for new adventures. And eventually, they decided to not go with the military idea, but decided to go with the um, space adventures instead. Ah, my phone is falling out of its holder. See, they had all kinds of stuff. I mean, I don't know how we would have felt about having a military, like, American soldier for He-Man. I mean, really strange. Especially after the cartoons. High-tech troopers. Research and technology scientists. Come on, phone. Stay in the holder. There's the Starship Eternia. Humanitarian rescuer. Interesting. Hey, let's set the same grappling hook from G.I. Joe. G.I. He-Man. Oh, Karate He-Man. Ease up, He-Man. And your, uh, look at that. Karate Cortex. It's going to bust your body. They had all kinds of different crazy ideas. Here, of course, we have the bear again. He-Man and Grizzler. And there's the tank. And then they decided to go with uh, New Adventures. But you take a look at this, and this New Adventures He-Man looks more like the laser power He-Man. There's Optic, big giant eyeball guy, half robotic. We got some guys we have never seen before. Look at that. A robotic battle cat. Bah, 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 bah. All right, let's take a look at you guys' comments. Sorry about that. Lords of Power by Mark Taylor. Yeah, I was upset about the movie even being on Earth. What's the deal with that? Right? We want to see Eternia. We want to see Triclops. We want to see Trap Jaw. We want to see Merman. And even the Beast Man was not even Beast Man to me. Yeah. Sorry. The movie to me was an utter disappointment. Now I see a way to add Eternia to make a huge solid playset, but it's too late. I didn't have the skills back then, and now I can't afford one. I know they're so expensive now. It's crazy. If you guys ever do end up getting an Eternia, make sure you buy the, the repo track right away. There's the new power sword. I have the power. There's the... Uh, this, this is made to go on their shoulder. A big old gun. Wow, look at these crazy vehicles and stuff. So they got some pretty crazy stuff going on here when it came to the new adventures. And of course they didn't make very many new adventure stuff out of some of these concepts. Let's just push that book back there. Oh wow, look at this. Heroic 
Huh. Is that the DeLorean? Is this the Back to the Future car? And this is how He-Man traveled through time. He used the flux capacitor. Whoop, 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 whoop. I mean, that does look like the, the DeLorean, right? No, don't get me wrong. Hmm. Yeah, Blade was cool. Look at that. Could He-Man survive? Not up-chucking. Put him in the ball and spin him around. Oh, look at that. The battle base would transform. That is pretty cool. And they had a different idea for the battle base. And eventually we know they actually ended up making the, the um, Eternia spaceship. It's getting hard to turn these pages towards the end. Oh, that's cool. Look at these, this cool spaceship looking thing too. Oh, look at that one. It's like a giant meteor. And then it transforms. And of course, we've seen the moon, right? And here's a cool spaceship looking thing too. It's almost like he has a cell phone in his hand. But he doesn't. It's not a cell phone. There's more of the moon. Evil spheroid. Evil spheroid. And that is the end. What a cool book. And I know why this is one of my favorite books. So when I want to have ideas of what I can make or something else, sometimes I'll pull this book out and look at it. Very cool. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for joining me yet again. It was a lot of fun going through the book. Last night was a little more fun. Today, I'm just kind of tired out, and I apologize because I know I don't sound quite as energetic, but uh, I'm just I'm just tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. But anyway, if you haven't checked out my Instagram, check out my Instagram. And uh, let's see here. Uh, me. So this was my latest inst um, UV light stuff. So cool, cool. All right, you guys. Like, subscribe. Tell your friends. And I will see you guys next video. Bye now.